So they went on walking grumpily about, saying, Boots, boots, nothing but boots. Bloop, 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 bloop. It's time for Serial Viewing! Welcome, my friends, to another episode. We are watching The Flowerpot Men, Bill and Ben, from 1952, the oldest thing we've ever done. Hello, Jeremy. This is the oldest thing we've ever done. It is easily the <laughs> oldest thing in a good decade or more. Hello, Jennifer. We do we. <laughs> It's going to be a lot of that tonight, isn't there? I can tell. <laughs> Bill and Ben, simply known as the Flowerpot Men, ran for 26 episodes across a single series from 1952 to 1953. Uh, the Flowerpot Men was the story of Bill and Ben, two little men made of flowerpots who lived at the bottom of an English suburban garden. We watched, unusually for us, episode 26, Flying Boots, which is the last episode in the series. Um, just look it up Bill and Ben Flowerpot Men uh, Flying Boots you'll find it it is on YouTube if you'd like to keep up with us is it? Uh, and in this episode it is sorry where did you watch no, it? no 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 <laughs> I mean is it the last episode in the series? it's the last episode in the original series yes <laughs> yeah that, mm. that was their character development yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, this episode was first shown on the 10th of June 1953 how old were you, Henry? Ancient. Oh, I was at least 16. <laughs> <laughs> it does amaze me because, as I was working out earlier, less than 10% of the population had a TV. <laughs> wow. It's like, who is watching this? Uh, the rich 10%. <laughs> yeah, because Grant, my dad, in 19... He would have been... When this aired in March 1953... He would have only been two and a half, not quite three, and he didn't have a TV then. Yeah. So, which would have, he would have been perfect audience for this as a three-year-old, but he <laughs> yep. didn't have a TV then. Well, I think this, I don't know, actually, because um, this was originally aired as part of uh, BBC Television's Watch With Mother. Yep which featured a different programme each weekday, most of them involving string puppets. This was shown as part of that. Um, I almost, for some reason, immediately went, well, this would have been a radio show as well, but it's a puppet <laughs> show. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> No, I was thinking, is this, I is this old enough to have been shown in the cinema? No. They were, no, they wouldn't have sent this. BBC wouldn't have allowed things like that. No, you have to pay to get into Crash the cinema. commercialisation. <laughs> they did the news, didn't they, in the cinema? I don't think they put TV on cinema. I don't know. Because, well, this is before the coronation. The coronation was in June that year. So. Bloody hell. And dad remembers going to his next door neighbours and watching the coronation. Now, he would not have been three. On their seven inch TV on set. On their TV, yeah. <laughs> seven inch. <laughs> um, so I'll recap the, the plot really quickly because it won't take long. <laughs> <laughs> uh. The, far, the gardener leaves a pair of boots at the bottom of the garden, which turn, about, turn, out, turn out to be possessed, yeah. and Bill and Ben play with them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That, that's the entire... That's the entire what is it with these, these mid-20th uh, uh, century uh, programmes, kids' shows, pushing for Satanism? Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we've got demon-infused flower pots, mm -hmm. um, possessed boots, and, possessed flowers, and a weed that could be a sunflower, could be a dandelion that obviously is on drugs. <laughs> Did you see its eyes? They're that thing is on a drugs. stoner. <laughs> yeah, the, the singing flowers—they were all on drugs as well. Well, I, I've put here. Uh, what is it with kids TV? being home to weird shit <laughs> and then kid... i put also 
kids TV having characters that don't speak English or any recognisable language. Because ev- it wasn't even in the 50s. Right up, I mean, na- now, I mean, the, you had the Teletubbies, what, 20 years ago? And then you had, <laughs> oh, what was them dancing weird things that... Dancing um, weird things? They did In the Night Garden. Dancing weird. Did the yoga. Oh! I have no idea. I quite liked that. Yeah. But you but wouldn't. <laughs> but no, it was when, what's his name? Boy. The youngest. When we had, when we had a young person in the house. <laughs> uh, but in the night the garden as well. That, that's still going. In the night garden. Yeah. You're not, no, no, I will not hear a wrong word against <laughs> in the night garden. <laughs> I know There's you nothing like wrong it. with them. <laughs> it's, and I know that they're supposed to be simple and they're supposed to be lots of fast movement. I was going to say lots of colour, but this is obviously not in colour. But... <laughs> oh, yeah, Early this days. is black and white. I should say that. This is our first black and white mm. uh, show we've watched. Yeah, that was before the world got Technicolor. Well, the yeah. language that the flower, mon- flower pot men speak is called Oddle Poddle. Yes. Mm-hmm. Which is invented by a voice artist called Peter Hawkins, who provided speech for the Daleks. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> the original Daleks, yeah. And Captain Pugwash. Um, so, uh, so at the end of every episode, they would say to Little Weed, Babap Ickle Weed, which was goodbye. Yes, uh, I wrote it that. It was heavily, heavily criticised for hindering children from learning proper English. It was a bit of a controversy at the time, just like the Teletubbies did. <laughs> yes. I knew There's, there was loads of them. I knew it yeah. was his own language or like he did made some, some form of language from it. Did anyone else as. All right. This is the first time I've watched this since I, don't know, I was tiny. I knew it existed, but that's it. But by the time I got to the towards the end of the episode, I knew what they were saying. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I had figured it out. <laughs> mm. I knew what they were saying. I knew what they were getting at. It's like at the beginning when she's trying to wake him up. I'm telling that I can tell that they're telling her to fuck off and that they want to go back to sleep. <laughs> I get that. I get what they're saying. It's but I am an adult. I'm not a two year old yeah. that's watching this and who's learning languages. Yeah. So he's the narrator is. Uh, describing the scene so there's the plant pots with the sorry there's the seeds and there's the boots and there's two plant pots and in between there's a weed i read a note bullshit that's a triffid (laughs) (laughs) it's got a face (laughs) it's got a face it's high it's got even though it's in black and white you can tell it's got pink bloodshot eyes (laughs) (laughs) um so we we've missed the credits already. So let's 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 talk about the credits first. Mm-hmm. Was anyone else terrified of that house? Oh yeah, I, that gave it's me scary looking <laughs> baby son from Teletubbies vibes. You know. Oh, I'm going to see that house in my nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> so like that had dev- that had evil eyes as well. Yeah, it was all in the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did. I don't so go on then. What, what did? What did you think of the theme music? Well, I wrote down. It sounds all of the all of it, the whole thing, um, the whole of the uh, the intro and the outro and the sounds and the way it was saying Bill and Ben. It just said it sounds like a mix between haunting horror and satirical Monty Python, um, and it kind of <laughs> looks like it too. <laughs> it kind of looked like the intro to Flying Circus. I suppose this is what they would have been parodying. Yeah, well, yeah. In a, in a way. From 50, yeah, early 50s. I actually found it, all right, it was obvious that they were recording this in a studio. Yeah. You can hear, and that's what I found interesting, you can actually mm-hmm. hear the studio space around them. So when uh, the narrator is talking, you can hear her. You, you, I can tell the room she's in, I can see it. I can see the room she's in and she's talking. And she's probably talking, it's probably recorded live. So as the puppeteer is moving things, she is watching, she's standing there with her script, reading it, which I actually found quite interesting. And near the end, you can hear where they've, they've cut some of it or where they've, they've spliced in some more, some different takes and you can hear the difference in reverb that comes from her voice. And it's like more present. I didn't get that, but I believe There was like a tiny bit at the end and she said, it was like the last line and it was just like, like, you know, uh, good night or something like that. And it was, um, it was a lot louder and it was right. a lot more reverberated. I mean, when they when he sings the opening credits, because there's a chap singing the credits, he's he sounded like he was sat in a bathroom stall. It was quite 
echoey. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, the characters, if you can call that, were devised by two women called Frida Lingstrom and Maria Bird uh, in the very early 1950s. Uh, Maria Bird actually narrated all 26 episodes. So that's her. That's one of the um, designers. But, and this is what I, I noticed this straight away. If you go onto IMDb, in the trivia, this is credited to someone called Hilda Brabham. Okay. Now, Hilda Brabham mm. created another set of characters called Bill and Ben, who were not Flower Point men, had nothing to do with this, but she um, had sold the, she'd sold the stories to BBC, and they had been used in Watch With Mother. So there was somebody somewhere has got that wrong. But also, uh, so let me get this right. So in uh, BBC in-house magazines, it was incorrectly attributed to Hilda Brabham. Uh, QI oh, wow. got it wrong. Oh. They attributed this to Hilda Brabham. Yeah. Um, and the Independent, the newspaper, also published, or attributed this to Hilda Brabham. All three sources, including QI, put out a correction later on saying, actually, we, we understand this was not Hilda Brabham. This was... Uh, Lingstrom and Bird. Um, so blah, 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 blah. both programs, so the original were by Hilda Brabant, which had nothing to do with this show, and Mirror Birds were produced by Frieda Lingstrom. So there's the connection between the two. Um, later in her life, Hilda Brabant had suffered a stroke and maintained vociferously that she did actually invent the characters used in this series, hmm. which then caused BBC lawyers, no, sorry, Lingstrom's lawyers, <laughs> to come tearing out of the woodwork. <laughs> threatening all sorts of litigation if she appeared on television or any other media to propagate that claim. Whoa. <laughs> so even, even back in the 50s, people were arguing about who created what. Oh. I mean, like, props to Henry and Serial Viewing for, like, giving up the right amount of sourced information, you know. This is where you come <laughs> for the correct facts and the, uh, the children's Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're well known for our factual accuracy. <laughs> A propagated news source. Well, that's yeah. interesting. You know, like, I think because television was so brand new, I mean, sorry, uh, popular television was so brand new at the time that the something like this probably had never happened before. I mean, when did you say the dispute actually happened? Was it, like, straight away when the show was being bro broadcast? No, actually. When um, it was all, it was all like y tens of years after the event. Mm. People just started incorrectly attributing the show Weird. to Brab, like a Mandela yep. effect. Yeah, and then later in her life, before she passed away, <laughs> Braben herself then started claiming. Yeah, yep, that was me. <laughs> Intense. <laughs> and then Mandela all kinds effect. of lawyers, all, all kinds of lawyers went, whoa, 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> And jumped all over it, yeah. Wow. That is a strange occurrence of events. Yes. Um, apart, for, so apart from Bill and Ben and Weed, <laughs> there were only two other characters that I could find in the original. Um, Slowcoach. Can anyone guess what kind of animal Slowcoach is? Is he a snail or a slug? No. He's a tortoise, isn't he? Oh, tortoise! <laughs> <laughs> the answer to that question is no. <laughs> yes, he's a tortoise. Tortoise. <laughs> and, and I'm really intrigued about this for some reason. In, only, only appeared in one episode. Uh, the three of them meet a faintly mysterious character made out of potatoes. <laughs> Dan the Potato Man. <laughs> Dan? Dan. Dan the Potato Man, to give him his full name. You say one episode. I wonder, why was he mysterious? Yeah. Oh, the potato mystery. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things I wanted to... So, all right, so this is the, the nascent days of children's television. This is early, early stuff. Like, really early. In fact, possibly the first in the UK, at least. When was Howdy Doody uh, released? To the internet! Oh, I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll carry on talking. Yep. Uh, so, all right. So, this was very early in children's television. Okay. So, we've already established that the budget for children's television in the early days wasn't great. Yeah. But craftsmanship being what it was, do you think they could have done a better job with the puppets? Uh, I don't know. Looking at how they do, I 
think I prefer, much prefer Bill and Ben. <laughs> Howdy Doody <laughs> came out in 1947, so it's just slightly, oh, right, there slightly older. Howdy Doody is proper terrifying, yes. um, nightmare inducing. Mm-hmm. But do you, what do you reckon? I mean, I, I was watching it and I was with the, the bend, the strings, you could, you could all right, I, I get it's a puppy show and you're going to get the strings, but. Know, Something just... that's in- intrigued me about this sort of thing, because the same you can see a natural progression for craftsman work when it comes to television and entertainment, and it's it's a curious phenomenon, I guess that it it's it's easy enough to view the changes, like you said, like Flowerpot Men and and Howdy Doody, then compare it to say Thunderbirds, which came out in the sixties, yeah. but then compare it to something like uh. Like the Muppets, which came out even later, right? That was seventies. Seventies, yeah. and then mm-hmm. you compare it to something nowadays uh, that's like puppets. Uh, I don't know. Oh, we'll say like the Happy um, Times Murders. Yeah, or the Dark Crystal they did. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dark Crystal remake. Like they're still Muppet, or well, they're still puppets, and they're still all the same technology and the craftsmanship. It's not, in, in all the intense purposes, puppets have been around for ages. It shouldn't have gotten better. I think what's happened is they're just, they've, people value television more. And so as it's gone on, they've sunk more money into making the puppets. And it's interesting to see that you could see how the impact of television changes as time goes on to warrant the better making of these puppets yeah. even though yeah, like become, in becomes... the beginning they probably could have made something as good as like the dark crystal style stuff but they were just like eh, it's it's this new found angle technology that we're just gonna make for a kid's show we don't <laughs> you know it's a st- puppet on a string you know and it but does look like the traditional that's... marionette style thing and that's what they are yes. that's the original one thunderbirds was an original with were, were marionettes but you're you're then comparing it to Jim Henson, mm-hmm. um, and they're they're a different level of puppet. They're not just string or somebody's hand. Oh, well, Kermit is, but <laughs> they've got little robots in. But them yeah, that's and what I mean. Got, the, the technology like grew and broadened yeah. um, because the impact of television was more. Like I, mm-hmm. I'm sure like Jim Henson would still have contributed to puppetry but like when it comes to like even if he hadn't been on television but i still reckon that the the impact that television had and you can see it correlates with like the growing impact of television plus the uh, i don't know care and attention that detail that goes into these puppets it's well, quite interesting the more yeah the more money that television can generate mm-hmm. either through the commercial like uh, adverts and stuff or do syndications where they can sell it on to other things the more effort they're going to make yeah definitely so so the bigger the bigger the industry gets the bigger the productions does that make sense and obviously like stuff like productions have left legacies um and i think like you could just look at i think the new bill and ben which i'm sure we'll get on to is stop motion well that's right isn't it but that's where um, we're going next yes i'm just trying to think um Anyway, I, I've rambled on, but it's cool. It's interesting to see. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm... You've got the audience has changed as well. Yeah. So the audience that was looking at this in 1953 wouldn't actually. You, you've, they've actually got small children mm-hmm. who are not used to seeing things alive on the TV. Yeah. Um. So they they would have had to have shoehorned that in. And ease them into it. Mm-hmm. I mean, can you imagine in 1953 showing four-year-olds Teletubbies or <laughs> anything that's on now? Like you say, a 3D <sighs> version. They're like their little minds are going to explode My out of their heads. Eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think so it's they've... as well. Like certain shows, such as The Muppets and Dark Crystal, they have such long-lasting legacies. So as to increase the amount of profitability that would be made off of them as well so a lot of it just all makes sense you know like when you first start out with a project nobody's going to give you more budget than say a product something safer i would also imagine that 
the BBC, I have no proof of this, but the BBC in the 50s was probably a very, very serious, very sensible organisation run by very serious, sensible men. Uh, yes, we, uh, we should do something for children. Yes, uh, here's uh, a pound. Off you go. Make <laughs> yeah. something brilliant. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Bre- do a puppet much, show. Pound is a lot, a lot of money. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what are kids like? Kids like puppets. Brilliant. There you go. <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah. They're not going to... Sp- I mean... Even today, even today, they don't spend huge amounts on kids' TV, which is why they can. That's why they churn it out quickly. Yeah, and you end up with five hundred episodes of, I don't know, some cartoon. So twenty six episodes in the original series, and I can't imagine it took very long to come up with the plot for twenty six episodes. Not if they were all as rich and and enrapturing well, as this one. All of them, <laughs> all of the episodes follow the same structure. Uh, so the the two would have a minor adventure, a slight mishap would occur, one of them would take the blame, then confess, and they'll go to bed. <laughs> and that's it. That's for all twenty six episodes. I don't know, but I can't talk for the remake. But all twenty six episodes were exactly take the, the same. Blame. Yep. So in this one, well, it's not even that. Well, yeah, who won? Right, I see. So who crashed? Who won? Blah blah blah. blah. Yep, that was me. Was it? Was it Bill? Was it Ben? It was. I don't know. Yeah, one of them. Not gonna lie, I kind of zoned out a little bit then. <laughs> it was Ben because that's when the song ended. It was it Bill? Was it Ben? This is the song on blah blah blah. I did write. Was this song the baby shark of its time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when they when they were dancing because they're like, oh they're all so happy they all have a dance and the boots and the the platform they're all having a dance and just, there were kids like going into school the next day humming that tune. <laughs> <laughs> Da, da, da. Or just showing off because my dad's got a TV and you don't. The parents yeah. are just like, shut <laughs> up. <Yeah. laughs> um, what I don't get is is how because I thought this was like the first episode or one of the early ones, and it was introducing Bill and Ben. Because, like, I don't think the narrator she didn't say Bill and Ben until like the very end when she said that Ben won. You know, and like I don't apart from the fact that it was written on their backs. Like, and I imagined it was for, like, a, a two-year-old. There was, like, no mention of Bill and Ben throughout the entire episode, and then she was just like, oh, the flower pot man, oh, the one on the left, oh, the one on the right. <laughs> like, this one, like, the, the low one and the high one. Um, I can't remember how she specifically referenced They were to both them. high. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I don't... Yeah, it, it seems it's, a bit strange. Their names are mentioned in the opening song. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's it. Like, you, well, yeah, no, but you're right. That's you're just they're just a shit. There you go, Bill and Ben, the flowerpot men. Yeah. Well, one of them's real, one of them's Ben. You figure it out. Yeah. Well done, kids. <laughs> um. So, the original twenty six episode, twenty six episodes were repeatedly shown on the BBC right the way through to the seventies. Mm-hmm. Wow. So this was a, this was very very popular. Hmm. Um, I'm surprised it took till 2001 to be rebooted. Yes. Uh, yep. So 4th of January 2001, um, renamed just to Bill and Ben, uh, aired on CBBC on BBC Two. Um, as you said earlier, stop motion animation in 35 mm millimeter film, uh, full color, made by Cosgrove Hall Films with a team of ten animators which is a huge increase from the one puppeteer and one narrator. (laughs) (laughs) Um, It added a bunch of different characters, including Rose, a mean female rosebush, a male hedgehog called Boo, and a talking tomato called Ketchup. (laughs) Um, The reboot ran for 52 episodes across two series, and I can only imagine it wasn't as popular. Talking tomato called Ketchup. That's that's insulting. What else would you call it? (laughs) That's... It's a perfect name. <laughs> High corpse. Oh, the, it likes calling a well. Yeah, it's like calling a person like long pork. Yeah, <laughs> sausage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've called people sausage in my <laughs> life. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> well, I watched it. <laughs> you watched? Did you? I did. Do you remember? I remember, remember that one. one? I remember it more than this one. So you would have been three. Three when this came out. Four. Yeah. Yeah. God, I'm young. <laughs> Give us your experiences, Jeremy. Tell tell us about it. I it never even don't occurred to me that you much. would have watched the reboot. Yeah, no, I watched the reboot. I I thought it was puppets. I didn't realize it was 
that and it's weird because i feel like i did watch the really old one as well at the same time um like i'd seen both uh but i i don't know because i remember blending i remember the theme song from this one more than the one in the original but i do remember the flowerpot men knowing more characters in the uh in the garden and having more than just a narrator yep. as the voice and it being a lot more colorful <laughs> instead of black and white yeah <laughs> yeah i mean it, it was all right i mean again it, it was very find... similar to this now when i was very very young we had a black and white tv so this up until i was what 12 tv was in black and white it was just that's what it was <laughs> it never occurred to me um did you find the fact that this was in black and white in any way jarring? Did Was it really noticeable or did you just kind of accept it for what it is? You're asking me specifically because I'm young? or I'm asking you specifically, <laughs> but either of you really. Eh, not really. I did, it, didn't, yeah, it didn't really make any difference to me. I'm sure if I was a three-year-old, all the pretty colours would have made mm. the difference, but it was black and white. What? I picked up more on was, and it might just because, be because of uh, my hobbies and the fact that I listen to a lot of things, is the uh, the audio quality, and uh, not necessarily like where it was recorded. The uh, mm. like the constant sounds of it almost sounding like it was being played on a record, like yep. the the lo-fi. Um, so the scratch the, almost. Yeah, there was constant like background hum and noise and. I noticed that way more. And obviously, like, the flickering in the um, the camera, I thought it was kind of cool. It was almost like a ret- <laughs> like, it, you know, what we're used to now is it being retro, so. Well, it, it was literally retro. Yeah, it was <laughs> of the time. It's cool. I did start looking up, um, like, related media, books, board games, mm. puzzles, that kind of thing. And then I got bored because it was just an unending list. <laughs> Of books and annuals and jigsaws, and so it's all out there. <laughs> um, they were releasing board games for Bill and Ben up until the original uh, black and white one, up until the nineties. Wow! I found I found one from the I think it was the late nineties, which is before the the reboot even existed. <laughs> Wait, and I had a sorry. Um, how long did the reboot last for? Two seasons. Oh, so just like two years. I don't know how long. Uh, I assume so. I didn't get dates on that one. Wow. Two years. I mean, they showed it on CBBS and up until two thousand and eight. And they were shorter than the original. The originals were all about fifteen minutes in length, but the reboot were ten minutes in length. Oh well, got to get those ads in there. <laughs> well, yeah, that's it. <laughs> No, it was on CBBS. There wouldn't have been any adverts. Uh, they always advertise for other. They've shows always got, they they, yeah, they're they're adver- <laughs> internal advertising. Yeah, and for the and you would have got a lot more. You wouldn't have just had a narrator between the uh, between shows as you'd back in the fifties. And now for the news, yeah. that was Bill and Ben. You would have, you've got uh, people in colourful jumpsuits with over enthusiastic grins talking at oh, the yeah. kids these days. Yeah, who who used to do it? I don't know. Who didn't? Well, that's true. <laughs> any british celebrity yeah they were all so many british celebrities started on children's television <laughs> oh who was our favorite though there was um holly willoughby <laughs> no. oh, yeah, she did do that didn't she she was oh, on itv yes. anyway no cbb's didn't Danny did um, danny john jules do it at some point no he did a tv series where he was a storybook reader yeah the story story makers Story, te- story, no, story, tell yeah. He's in a library. Yeah, story makers. He was another one. See, he had puppets in that. I watched that. <laughs> <laughs> story um, makers. Um, <laughs> story oh makers, there you go. Um, they you would have been 10 minutes shows, as well though. because the attention span of little, yeah, little ones. It's understandable. I mean, honestly, I was watching this and my attention span wavered. wavered, wavered so. Yeah. That might be because... One of my notes I did write down quite early. Oh, when they were getting up, when Weed was trying to wake them up and they were trying to get out of their pots. Mm-hmm. And they were it, telling her to fuck off. Yeah, it felt like about, it, in a 15 minute show, it felt like it took an hour. Yes, <laughs> it did. I was like, uh, it's, it was halfway through and I was like, oh my God, how long is this show? 
Uh, we're st- uh, we're going to dance, okay? Yeah. Still <laughs> dancing. Yeah. And we're still dancing. <laughs> this is wonderful. <laughs> yeah, they really, they kind of padded. Uh, but yes, they padded the time. Yeah. So here's a little bit of them dancing. Here's them like looking in the boot. <laughs> the boots could fly, by the way. Um, yeah. And I think that is that is us looking at it in today's eyes because back then, children would have just been excited that a there's something on the television just for them, and b it looks like that puppet show we saw that one time when we went to wherever we went to yeah. seaside or we went to London. <clears throat> so, something curious that I've, I've thought about: Would you know how kids these days, kids these days, don't have a, kids um, these days a long attention span? Because no, I don't. Nope. Everything is uh, well. There's so much like information, like regards to YouTube, and the shows are like they're quick, they're punchy, they're like yeah. pow, pow, pow. His also happening. like on YouTube as well. You have uh, everything on demand. You have everything. Mm. Everything's a lot quicker as well. Like you can watch a two minute program. Like and especially with like TikToks and and vines and things, they're all <laughs> less than a minute long. Anything like that. Do you reckon that kids in when TV first began for children um, in the 50s, do you reckon they had less of an attention span as well just because they weren't used to TV? Would you think it would be difficult for the parents to sit them down? Or do you think because it was a brand new thing they'd be enraptured by it? Do you reckon like it's... uh, Yeah. But but it just looks like a puppet show to them because, yeah, it's a TV, like, but to a two-year-old who's seen a puppet show it's just going to be the same thing so are they going to but be it's like a puppet sh- yeah it's a puppet show in their living room yeah there's that but- on the on the box that sits in the corner and it's it's the same i yeah no i don't think i think they would have been enraptured by it i think they would have come they would all of their mates would have shown up at the house around that time mm. but if you teach kids today they have a long intention span it's only certain children and bad parents that have children with short attention spans. <laughs> I think it's it's how the media is progressing. I think is to yeah. make things shorter yeah, and shorter. Yeah, and more because and more, more, less and less it's been proved content. that our brains, yeah, our brain. It's it's like school lessons. They've stopped making them so long because it, even as an adult, you learn in sound bites. So as an adult, you're told not to spend more than 20 minutes at your yeah. camera, at your camera, at your computer, to get up and walk away and then come back again. It's because after 20, 20 minutes, your brain is stopped doing it or your eyes are or, you know, you're not there anymore. And it's the same with children. Um, but yes, definitely the media has made it so. Um, but it's also as well when people are looking at it, they don't have hours to sit there looking at a TV show. So if you make a one minute TikTok, people will, can look at it. And then, and what's the one place that most people look at their phones? Um, it's in the toilet, isn't it? It's in the toilet yeah. or in the, in the, you know, whatever. Not young so people, it causes, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but when they're at work or when they're at school, they're in, they go to the toilet, they get five minutes. Well, that, that's five TikTok videos. Or, yeah. you know, one YouTube video. But that's, that's just See, breeding. So what the... you're saying is you can watch crap whilst crapping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I think it's... Like, yeah, it's... Like, it's all geared towards it, and it's, like, no content, and it's easily made, and people hurt, hunger for more and more different content. Mm. It's, it, it's interesting how media's going that way. Mm. So do you think this was a good representation of the early years for children's television? I think that's fairly typical. Yeah. I mean, I remember Andy Pandy. Oh, um, <laughs> oh Muffin the Mule. Uh, I t- I, even when I was young, I hated them. <laughs> I never really watched them because I, I wasn't born then. I remember Andy Pandy vaguely. Apparently, I used to like it when I was little, but I don't remember watching it. Um, oh, I used to have some blue and white stripe trousers. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> oh, look, it's Andy Pandy. I remember that joke. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is fairly typical of the mid early fifties for kids TV. Yeah, I, I from my like little knowledge on the the subject, I would assume that this is 
pretty safe for it. You know, like, you know, very safe, very calming, very... We can make one kind of show. So when I was looking for the episode for us to watch, I actually went through three or four of the episodes on YouTube and I was, had a had a quick look through the comments on each one. And in nearly every single one, you've got different people saying, oh, this brings back memories. I used to love this when I was young. <laughs> oh, the nostalgia. Oh, we used, used to love watching this. We'd go around our friend's house and watch this. And there was, there was an outpouring of love from the people who would have watched this, I suppose, up to the 70s. Hmm. So it was a a cherished TV show. Yeah, I see that. I see why. So on on that note, would you, Jeremy? Yes. <laughs> as the as the younger member of the team, would you? You're sat around uh, with your mates on a Saturday night drinking beer channel surfing and you come across this would you sit and watch it <laughs> <laughs> um honestly probably and not for that reason <laughs> we probably would because anybody not from this country we'd show it to anybody in this country would know it and it would be like yep. oh this is like this is bill and ben this is the flower pot man you know everybody and it'd be funny to go back and watch it and then like take the piss out of it kind of like we do <laughs> <laughs> and be and be like oh i used to watch this all the time oh and then you you just end up chatting for throughout the whole thing and not actually watching it you just you it would just put it on you could get a good drinking game out of this mm-hmm. so every time weed says weed or every time they meant some they say someone's name mm-hmm. you got a drink jennifer would you recommend this to someone with young children mm, probably not no, not exciting no. enough. No, really not young. these days. Really young. Yeah, really, yeah really still young. not these days. I mean, yeah, okay. Um, others have liked the new series of Bill and Ted. Bill and Ted? Bill and Ben. <laughs> <laughs> but um, nah. No? Nah, probably not. Okay, so we'll leap from that right into giving our rating but wait, for the show. So- wait, before we do that, I want to ask you guys. When was your first encounter with the flower potman? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. It's one of those things. I don't remember ever watching this before. I knew. I knew. I knew who they were. If you show me, if you just show me a picture of the black and white ones, I would have gone, "Yes, Bill and Bell." And they live at the bottom of the garden with weed. Yeah. <laughs> don't remember ever watching this. Ever. Yeah, I don't remember watching and the whole don't remember- episode of the old version. You, yeah, you guys remember the, the new, the obviously. One. Yeah, I remember the new one. Oh, yeah, you would do. It's You're in got... a different country. Oh no! I... Did it? I Mark... Was it Mark Addy that did the voice for that? I don't even Sounds know who familiar. that is. Yeah, oh, wait, right. I don't want to know. It was um no, I I looked it up because I actually watched a bit of the episode after the old one because I was like, what is the difference? I was curious about it again, so I I found out some information. I can't remember his name, but I think Henry, you weren't in the country when this happened, when this was on. Were you? Yeah, I was. Oh, you mean the reboot? Yeah, reboot. Yeah, I came back in two thousand one. Oh, okay. I came back to the UK in two thousand, but I wouldn't have had a child of no. an appropriate age to watch it then. So no, it completely missed. Me. Yeah, it's like I was probably aware. I was probably shows. aware that there was another version, but mm. no idea. Right, uh, Jennifer. I'd like to give me a, give I'd like you to give me a rating out of ten. Four. A four. Why a four? It only gets that because I know that a lot of people have fond rem- from that age who grew up with it have fond memories of it. Right. But <laughs> what the f- as a TV show goes, it's not particularly brilliant. Uh, well, I'm going to give it a three. Ooh. On the basis that I didn't, I didn't enjoy it. It was daft. It's too slow for modern sensibilities. Um, what I, I say this a lot about a lot of these shows, but what I did enjoy of it was probably for the wrong reasons. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that he's high, they're on acid. Um, uh, so I gave it a three because, again, for the same reason, I think you could show this to a very young child, or a very very young child, and I think they'd enjoy it. It's got nice gentle sounds. You've got a nice motherly, matronly 
voice. So feels that same it's... void that like trapdoor does for the like really and young it... toddlers. You just stick it on and they're not even paying yeah. attention. But it's not objectively bad, so I don't want to mark it any lower because it's not bad. No, it's just it is what it is. It is of its time. Yeah. So a three from me. Yeah, Jeremy. Yeah, that's why it's a little harsh to like rate it. Um. Oh, it's a little difficult to rate it because it's it's just it is. so obviously not from now <laughs> by everything about it. I think it's kind of cool to go back and it's like a time capsule because it's been a long time since that. And like the 50s is a long time ago. That's like 70 years ago now. Yeah. Which is still weird to think. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I Five point minus two. N- uh, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So 4.8. <laughs> 4. 4.3. I'm going to combine it 4.3. Yeah. So you're going to go a bit higher than the rest of us. Yes. Okay, so that gives it a grand score of, I'm going to round it to the nearest, so 3.8. Hmm. 3.8 for Bill and Ben, the Flowerpot Men. As we said, it's not objectively bad, but it's not, it's not great. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it is what it it's is. It's boring. Yep. Um, so every week we post, uh, or every episode, sorry, we post our show notes uh, up onto the website so you can go read our raw, unfiltered thoughts. Just go to the blog section on our website. They're all there. And I picked my favourite for this week <laughs> uh, for Ulysses 31 for our last episode, sorry. And it is, uh, join me in, join in if you know the words. It's simply... Ulysses, <laughs> <laughs> which I think was yours, Jerry. I think yeah, we Jerry. did. We not all write that. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Yeah. I called my notes that. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I literally wrote like yeah. Kept just putting a hold on the s. <laughs> so be honest. Did mm-hmm. we all sing it? The day after we watched it and did the episode, and we carried on singing Probably. it. Probably. We're still singing it now. Oh, I suppose I was singing it as we were getting ready to do the show. <laughs> I'll, I'll give some, everybody a taster of my notes this week. I think that it's going to be a good one. I think my favourite one I wrote, I've written down whilst watching it, was, Ah, he's got a stick up his pottery. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not, not my very last... Uh, comment uh was just uh they are off their t- tits on something <laughs> <laughs> yeah made a lot of drug jokes um so uh join us next week for <sighs> is the net right next episode was my choice and i did it because oh, um henry uh, it, had, it had to be done <laughs> it's... i remember what it is now, yeah. Yeah. Dog Tanyan. D'Artagnan. Sorry, dot No, no, no. In the original, it's D'Artagnan. In this, it's Dog Tanyan. Which is why they're all dogs. Yes, so our next episode is Dog Tanyan. I'm really not looking forward to it. What? Dog Tanyan's great. Uh, I watched so many episodes of that show, and I hated every minute of it. But it was that I I don't want to what I don't want to watch what's on the other channel, and I can't be bothered to get off. The, I felt I'm tired from school, so I'm going to lay here and I'm going to glare at the TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I had a little sister who absolutely loved it, so it was that or nothing. Well, yeah. so I, I want. Have you ever seen it, Jeremy? Nope, just heard it from you. Good. <laughs> Good. So, someone who hates it, someone who liked it, and someone who's never seen it, so you're going to be the tiebreaker next week. <laughs> yep. It does help because I absolutely love that story. So, the fact that it's in dogs, that's just brilliant. But that's the problem. I love the original story, but no one dies. No one gets stabbed. <laughs> I want I want real... <laughs> I want... We well, do it with dogs. I don't care. They could be parrots for all I care, but yeah, go on, get at it. <laughs> it's a child's cartoon humbug not- yes and i was a bloodthirsty little boy <laughs> <laughs> but we'll discuss this more on our next episode so I'm it's dog tanyan so join us next time is it um, gonna be an interesting arthur uh story or is it gonna be a interesting version of care bears it's <laughs> 
is what I'm curious about. <laughs> Which ones are going to be closer to? Uh, um, imagine, right, think real hard and picture hell in your mind. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was Wes of Gummidge. Yeah, no, he's Satan or Satan's anus or Scrote. If you'd like to leave us a message, um, comments, uh, advice, suggestions about shows to watch, you can do so uh, on our Facebook page, our Instagram account. You can email us directly at serialviewing at gmail.com. There is a contact form on our website, or you can leave us a voicemail. Leave us a voicemail, people, and we will play you on the show. Exciting stuff. You could be part of serial viewing history, just like our, our friend Pedro. Hello, Pedro. I don't think you're still listening, but <laughs> you never know. <laughs> um, any last thoughts, guys? No. No. Didn't really gender a lot of excitement. Watch this, this for the pot. <laughs> 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 All right. Then. Well, thank you very much, guys. Uh, join us next time for Dortanian. Uh, we appreciate you joining us on the couch, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. We. It's my birthday. Bill and Ben, Bill and Ben, Bill and Ben, Bill and Ben, Flower Pot Men, Flower Pot Men.